everybody today we are going to learn a few things about ns2 and here we are with some of the nodes ready with the topology so if we consider a small topology so let's start with the ns2 tcl scripts so here we go we have with us of the scripts here out of this we would like to first of all introduce you to w2 wireless 2.tcl so we use uh, gedit for the editing the our text as a text editor to just view at times tcl files so if you see here there are some queuing mechanisms and here we have certain queue types used here are the configurations like uh, the length link layer and then the xy area covered and then the odv protocol used so here we are creating a name trace file so we are looking for 002 or you can also call it uh, for the name also 002 tr is the trace file which is our focus we can set 802.11b and g settings because it's what it's the same frequency which is used by crn so we can use this frequencies and the data rate the way we want it because we are still working on the band of ism so this is node configuration and this is what we are just setting the random motion to be closed for all the nodes and that's why we are using the for loop for creating the nodes where nn determines how many number of nodes we want to create so as of now we have defined here the value of uh, nn the number of nodes so it's seven so we move ahead and thereafter we say that uh, the initial position will be at 40 and then we will you be changing its position using set dist and these are the configuration or these are the x y and z we have set it for thereafter we generate the traffic in this particular scenario we are just considering the tcp traffic so we set an agent and then we need a sync so tcp becomes the generator or source and then who becomes the destination is becoming the sync so that we have to attach it to the node so first of all that tcp0 which is here defined gets associated with node number zero means the source becomes the node zero and destination becomes the node five which we defined here so that's how we end also we need a, a file transfer protocol over the tcp so we always attach it to the source so again we are attaching it to the TCP wherever there is a source, which is at zero. And similar fashion, we also set the queuing type here and we can start and stop as and when required. It's always flexible and it's about, it's completely the choice that at which second, for example, we start at 30 second and then we stop at 48 and then we again start at 60 and then we stop at 70 seconds. So that's how multiple, this is TCP1, SYNC1, FTP1, similarly TCP2, SYNC2, FTP2. So these all are the nodes created with the uh, traffic generation. Thereafter, we start the node. So this is just, uh, we are indicating that once it gets terminated, please reset the nodes and stop all the nodes. And we would like to have this message outcome, which indicates to us that, yes, OK, we are exiting and we are done with the simulation. So the moment it stops, the simulation stops, this message is printed on the console. So this is a very simple uh, code. We would like to now run it. And then let's see how it goes. So we'll stop it as of now, and then we'll go here. So once we want to run it, we know that we have the command called ns and ns uh, then w2.tcl so it starts running and ns is exiting as we mentioned so we have now 002.tr the way we mentioned earlier so we can run the name file with the name command name 002.name 
and that will allow us to find out how our simulation is working. So we'll maximize this and then we'll start running it. When we run it, we can see that here there is a speed meter. We can define the speed of it initially if you don't want to wait for long. See your time started running faster. And these are all the nodes together, so it's like a mess. But then once it will start changing its position, you'll see the difference. So here it goes to its own positions defined with the set disk. So we have these all nodes starting from zero to six, which is total of seven nodes. After all these seven nodes are set to its position, it will start the communication. So this is what is the communication. I'm slowing it down so that we can observe the small packets passing that is acknowledgement and the big packets passing is the actual data. So if you see that there is a message passing from three, suppose to five or six. So that's what we have already defined in the, so that's how it will simply follow the way we have defined it. And there will be some packets drop as well. Let's see if we can demonstrate it in the visualization here. Yeah, so these are the packets dropping. So that's how it went. And then it's still communicating a few seconds. We communicate, we, that's how the real time scenarios are. At times we are sending the packets and then we are quiet. And then again, as and when needed, we send the packets or fetch the uplink, the downlink is, is very much variable. It's not really predictable actually. So it should be actually analyze and implement it randomly always. So that's how it goes. And then I'll just fasten it up so that, because we have understood most of the concepts and this is what is it's indicating the range of this wireless node. So you can see when they are communicating, they are in range and therefore they can perform the forwarding of the packets uh, throughout the communication and then it has stopped so however we are not very much depend on the uh, trace form or trace file analysis on the name files because name helps us only for the visualization but our focus for data analysis should be always the trace file formats so when we talk about the trace file formats we will be discussing a bit about it but let this and fast, and then we'll do that. So therefore it has ended, so I'll close it. After this, I would like to have a look on the trace file format. So let's see if our trace file has the data or no. So we go again for the editor that is gedit, and then we have 002.tr. So if you see, this is the trace file format where it this is indicating what is the event happening. And this is what is the time and then all others. So we can define always the different uh, trace file format. There are multiple trace file formats existing for NS2. So you can always define your trace file format in your gedit. And mostly what we have it, oh, sorry. It's again running, but we added two.tcl. And generally you have defined the trace file format information here. So we've used a normal wireless trace file format. Okay, so name trace all wireless at the name. And trace all at the 002. So that's where we define where or how we want our trace file. We move ahead to the analysis or aux scripts. So we have certain aux scripts. Uh, let us first of all start with the aux script of throughput. So let's uh, have a look at the throughput uh, file. Throughput .aux script. So we again use the gedit to open the file. So here we have 
So there are three things, the begin body and the end. So this is what is the structure of a, an org script. So here we define in the beginning, what are the three values? Would you like to set it before everything starts? This is what is coming from the trace file format. So if you observe that event is number one, so that's what time is. So this is what is the column number. So dollar one indicates the first column, dollar two indicates the second column, dollar three indicates the third column. That is the node ID, then the packet size, and then the level. That is a seven. So this is what we use it here. And then here we write down what is to be done. So we want to observe exactly TCP and the receiving packet. And it should not be the management or the acknowledgement packets because size of acknowledgement packet is generally 40 bytes and management packet is maximum 60 bytes. So we keep it that it should be always more than 100 to indicate that, okay, this is data packets only. And then we write down here that if the level is TCP and it is R and it is not the acknowledgement or management packet, then please add the, that size to the received field. Finally, once this entire set of things are executed and filtered, we would like to print it in this format where this is simple printf file where we are indicating that we want the kbps and the start stop time. And this is what is the formula actually we have used. So received packet divided by the difference multiplied by eight bytes and then thousand, so kbps. And then this is just the second and third parameter we are printing that is start time and stop time. So that's how it goes. And then we stop here. It was just a brief about the file. So how to run the aux scripts. So if you want to run the aux scripts, it is on the TR file and we use the word keyword and dash F and then the name of the throughput file, the aux script we want to run on which file we want to run. So that is 002.tr. And then we put enter and it gives us the KBPS that two GBPS approximately we have got it and the start time and the stop time. So it was, it, the simulation was for hundred seconds. So stop time is hundred seconds. So that's how we can get the throughput. We would like to move forward to the uh, maybe end-to-end -end delay or maybe packet delivery ratio, or let us have a look at the drop rate first. So. Let me uh, open the aux script of uh, drop rate. So I get drop rate, it'll open and have a look. So this is the code and I'll not go in depth in the drop rate. Just I would like to mention that we are just taking care of the D and this D that is the event, first event always that, okay, this many packets are dropped. And that's how we, we are observing from one to two. So that's how, so this is from and this is two. So we are just observing one set of flow. We can define it here. If you don't want, it's okay. You can define it here. And then we can print it in the end part. So it's not visible here. But uh, we know how we just simply print the things. So we can run the same thing again here. It goes to again, awk dash F, and then we have packet drop awk, and we are running again on the same trace file. So we get the number of packets sent zero, but the number of packet lost is three, one, one. So there may be a chance that there is no flow, but then the last information is very important. How many packets are total lost? Uh, we can also further follow the another set of things like packet delivery factor. So let's have a look at uh, packet delivery factor. So that can be pdf.org. So this is here, we have a send and receive and forward, and we are just printing the number of packets sent, received and 
forwarded. So this is the ratio we get it. So R sent by means the number of packets received divided by the number of packets sent is what is the ratio we are interested in. So it's a very simple code and you can easy get it. So let's run this one. So it comes to packet delivery factor .org on the trace. This is very important. And we see that 99 point means 0 0.99241 means it's very big ratio getting successfully delivered. So same way we will go ahead with the next one that is end to end delay. Let's see, end -to -end delay. So this is what is end to end delay. So again, there is some like AGT is the data packets and specific sequence number or specific TCP type of packets we have taken into consideration. And then we add all those things and find out the delay. And then we would like to print all those things. And then average end to end delay because it's milliseconds. So we have to multiply it. It was micro then likewise. So that's how we have done here. Again, we'll run in the similar fashion. So out mesh F and then end to end delay. And then on zero, zero two dot trace file. So we get to know that this is what is our end to end delay. So these are important information about when we have some executions happening and how it goes. Similarly, we can also define the similar things in uh, TCP, the way we have done it, same way UDP. So if we have UDP, we can have gedit again, w2 udp.tcf. So this is also the similar fashion we have defined it. And here you can observe that we have the same set of nodes, but here the bit major difference is the UDP traffic. So UDP traffic is non directed traffic. So it selects its own path on the way. If the condition is there, it manages itself, gets diverted into multiple path for faster delivery. And there is no reliability. So there are no acknowledgements coming. So that's what is the major difference between TCP and UDP. So that UDP, we have to have an agent. And the way we had sync for destination in the TCP, we have sync here or null agent instead of sync in the UDP. So sync, we give the name sync itself because UDP also have sync and TCP also have sync. So we attach it, so zero to five same way. And then we generate a CBR constant bitrate traffic. The way we used to create a file transfer with the reliability factor in the focus, we define here constant bitrate which is uh, like watching a video streaming. So we are just uh, representing that and then we can start and stop in the similar fashion. So this is just a first one and then similar one, second, third and fourth. So same pattern is followed and we can follow the same set of required uh, files for that. I have demonstrated for TCP. But as and when required, because CBR has a different set, so we cannot use the same set of uh, org files. As and when we have to change some certain parameters like not AGT, something else, or maybe FTP, or maybe CBR, or maybe TCP. So that packet types we have to change in these org scripts. I hope this uh, tutorial was uh, useful for you all. Have a good time. Bye-bye.